Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dong Liang Mu. Here, I'm going to present our paper, Understanding the Reproducibility of the Crowd Reported Security Vulnerability. This is a joint work with Alejandro Carras, Xin Xing from Penn State University, Li Mingyang, Hang Hua, and Gang Wang from Virginia Tech, and Bing Mao from Nanjing University. Security vulnerability are posing a serious threat to users, organizations, and even nations. Take one cry for example. In 2017, unpatched vulnerability allowed the one cry ransomware to shut down more than 300,000 computers around the globe. All the four vulnerabilities are identified after software release, so we can infer that it's infeasible for in-house team to identify all possible vulnerability before software release. Cons consequently, an increasing number of software vendors are relying on the power of the crowd to identify vulnerability, and companies like Google and Microsoft are spending millions of dollars on their bug bounty program to reward the vulnerability reporters. And after vulnerability are publicly released, reporters usually request an ID from CVE website. CVE is a list of common identifiers for publicly reported cybersecurity vulnerabilities. And this paragraph shows the number of vulnerabilities reported to CVE by year. You can see the significant increasing number along with the time goes. And CVE websites has archived more than 100,000 vulnerabilities. Despite a large number of crowd reported security vulnerabilities, some evidence asserts a poor quality of the vulnerability reports. In this finger, you, you can see the developer should complain he can't reproduce the vulnerability. And there are many examples like this. Those vulnerabilities would need more time and uh, manual effort to fix. And that's the problem. Therefore, for software windows, power reproducibility series delay the patching of vulnerability. Apart from software windows, security vulnerability, including security analysts and security research, are also bothered by this problem. Power reproducibility prevents security analysts from accessing potential threats to their customers timely. And for our security research, power reproducibility makes it hard to thoroughly evaluate our security solutions. In this finger, those top tier conference papers use public reported vulnerability for evaluation. However, due to the significant manual effort, those works use less than Use le uh, most of those work use then turn vulnerability to benchmark and evaluate their security solutions. So in our work, we are going to answer the following three questions. Question one, how reproducible are public security vulnerability reports? Question two, what makes vulnerability reproduction difficult? And question three, how to improve the efficiency of vulnerability reproduction? To answer those three questions, our method is manually reproducing vulnerability. By reproducing vulnerability, I mean using the information in vulnerability reports to trigger the vulnerability in the target system. In the rest of the talk, I will follow this roadmap. First, I will introduce the methodology to reproduce a vulnerability. Next. I will show our findings. To validate our findings, we, will three, we have three 48 external security professionals, both from both academic and industry. We have no enough time to introduce the detail here, so you can, if you are interested, you can refer the detail in our paper. Then I will 
give some suggestion to improve the efficiency of vulnerability reproduction. Finally, I will conclude our work. First, we randomly select a large connection of reported vulnerability. And we focus on memory error vulnerability due to their high severity and significant real-world impact. And their CVS score is greater than the overall CVS score. And we focus on open source Linux software due to the debugging and diagnosing <coughs> capability. Finally, we collect two databases, including 291 vulnerability with CV IDs and 77 vulnerability without CV ID. Basically, for each vulnerability, we collect the vulnerability reports by crawling the reference listed in the CV websites. Finally, we collect more than 6,000 vulnerability reports. In this CV entry, the reference of the cited websites are referred as the information source website or simply source website. We take the technical reports in those source websites as our cross-sourced vulnerability reports for evaluation. And due to our data statics, the top five websites in our data set are Expert Database, Security Focus, Red Hand Bagdala, Security Tracker, and Open Wall. To carry out the experiment, we formed a team of five security analysts. Each security analyst not only have, has the in-depth um, knowledge of memory error vulnerability, but first-hand experience analyzing vulnerability, writing exploits, and developing patches. Moreover, those security analysts have discovered and reported more than 20 new vulnerability to CV websites. Then we asked those security analysts to reproduce the vulnerability database. The reproduction workflow is like read the reports, set up environment, install and config software, trigger the vulnerability, and verify the vulnerability. Then I will introduce each step in this work, workflow. First is to extract the information from vulnerability reports. Our security analyst extracts useful information from vulnerability reports. However, in practice or in the real world, reporters usually miss some common sense information. To account for this, we develop a set of default settings when those information is missing in the vulnerability report. Then we set up an environment for vulnerable software analysis. If this information is missing, we will provide a default setting, a Linux system that was released in or slightly before the year when vulnerability was reported. The third step is install and config the vulnerable software. If this information is missing, we provide the default setting according to the building system of vulnerable software. In the fourth step, we trigger the vulnerability with provided the PUC file and the trigger method. The default setting is uh, varies with the type of the PLC. For example, if the PLC is a long string, the default setting for us is directly to input the string to the vulnerable program. The fifth step is verify the vulnerability with expected program behavior mentioned in the vulnerability reports. As we deal with the memory error vulnerability, so the default setting is unexpected program termination or program crash. After we discuss 
the workflow, I will show uh, the controller information source to compare to compare the quality of different sources. First, we will use single source, one of the top five source websites to reproduce the vulnerability. If reproducible, we will take it as success. Otherwise, we will use we will combine top five source websites to reproduce the vulnerability. If reproduced, the job is done. Otherwise, we will combine all the top five source websites to trigger the vulnerability. If reproduced, we made it. But if combine all still fails, we will take it as a failure. All those three information sources will use the previous workflow. But if combine all fears, what do we do? We will use deb manual debugging to solve those failure cases. And manual debugging will highly depend, highly depend on the hiking scale of those security analysts. Then I will show some findings. The first finding is that vulnerability is very difficult to reproduce. We use the success rate to evaluate the reproducibility. And to reproduce those vulnerability data set, we spend about 600 man hours to reproduce. To explain the success rate, we use uh, we take security focus as an example. In all CVEs, security focus cover 256 CVE cases, and we only success re successfully reproduce 32 cases, and the success rate is about 12 percentage. And from this table, we can have several observations. First. The single source return or low success rate. Second, Kanban top five has clearly improved the success rate. The success rate is improved to 62.5 percentage by Kanban all. And for CV, uh, for vulnerability without CV IDs, we only reproduce 20 cases. For those vulnerabilities, even we combine all the CV references, there are there are less than 20 cases with complete information. So we can use that our default setting works very well in the reproduction. Through intensive manual debugging, like debugging a software with the POC file, reading the source code and modifying source code, search corresponding information from the internet, we finally reproduce another 151 vulnerabilities through another 2,000 man hours. For the right table, we, uh, there, are 20, there are 74 cases we manually check the trigger method to reproduce the vulnerabilities. For software installation, 43 cases filled on this information. And the POC file is seen. From this table, we can infer that the key factors that make reproduction difficult are three, informa are three key information trigger method, software installation, and POC file. Finding three, uh, for those failure cases we reproduced uh, through manual debugging, there are two key questions. First, you don't know which information is problematic. And second, if you identify the problematic information, how do you recover it? First, 
instead of picking one information category to test, we just provide the priority of information to try. The first is trigger method. It means we can directly assume the trigger method is problematic and check another trigger method to try to reproduce the vulnerabilities. And if you identify the problematic information, how to recover the vulnerability? Our useful tip is correlation of different vulnerabilities is very useful. In other words, it's helpful to recover missing information by reading reports of other missing information. The similar vulnerability means same reporters, same software, same vulnerability types. And for 74 cases that failed on trigger method, we recover 68 cases by reading other similar vulnerabilities. Then I will give some suggestion to improve the reproduction efficiency. First, this is the this is the vulnerability discover program. First, faithful report, reporters report vulnerability to reporting system, and the reproducers reproduce the vulnerability based on the vulnerability reports. As we mentioned before, there are many vulnerability reports that leak lacks of many information. So our first idea is to standards vulner vulnerability reports. It means vulnerability report data set could enforce reporters to include a minimum information. If if one of the report website has standardized vulnerability, vulnerability reports for vulnerability reporter, manually generating standardized reports is really consuming. So our second idea is to develop a useful automated tool to collect the information and uh, generate standardized vulnerability reports. For reproducer, with those standardized reports, it's a waste of time or resource if we still reproduce the vulnerability until by manual effort. So our third idea is to automate the vulnerability reproduction with some tools like Vagrant and Docker. We have some demos in our GitHub repo show uh, later. Finally, I will give some conclusion of our paper. We conduct a user study about real-world vulnerability to study the reproducibility. We found the vulnerability reproduction is difficult and time-consuming. By cross-sourcing approach, we can increase the reproducibility. For those failure cases, we provide some new heuristic to recover the missing information. With those findings, we believe there is an urgent need to automate the vulnerability reproduction. We have open source our data set in this GitHub repo. We have prepared 12 virtual machine image and more than 300 reproducible vulnerability in this GitHub repo. For each vulnerability, we provide a fully test PUC file and pre-configured virtual machine or Docker image. With, with those detailed instructions, you can directly try it yourself to reproduce the vulnerability or directly try them in our prepared virtual machine. As far as we know, this data set is uh, the biggest public data set that was manually reproduced and verified. This data set will give future research 
future researchers a well-documented source to benchmark and evaluate their security solutions. Thank you, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions. All right, time for questions. Hi, I'm Jamie Davis from Virginia Tech. Uh, are there any differences between your recommendations for vulnerability reports and best practices for just general bug reports? Mm -hmm. Yeah, general. So like any bug report I submit, whether it's a security problem or not, needs to tell the developers what configuration I used, what input I used, what the expected behavior was, what the deviation was, et cetera. So is there anything special about security vulnerabilities for this study? Oh, uh, it security one. There there are some some information uh, related with security vulnerability for the may uh, for example the verification we we use the uh, result of memory error vulnerability like software crash to verify it. Uh, is this an answer for you? Well, so not really. Um, you had some recommendations about maybe using templates for security vulnerabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those templates sound exactly like what open source projects use when they request bug reports. Mm -hmm. So if you go on GitHub and open an issue against Python or Node.js or something, they've got a long template you've got to fill out, including all the stuff you recommended. So I'm not, I'm not sure how the security vulnerability aspect of this is relevant. How security analyst read out? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'll, I'll ask you later. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Evil from UC Riverside. I have a small question. Like, for some bug tracking system, when you report a bug, it requires you to say how to reproduce the bug. So, my question is, uh, does that mean um, following those instructions, you cannot reproduce the bug, or uh, in this report, they're just missing how to reproduce the bug? Uh, your question is uh, the reporting websites need you to provide the uh, step to reproduce the vulnerability. It's yes, uh, from my understanding, I know that Bugzilla, uh -huh. remember, remember there's an area for us to feel how to reproduce. Uh, they, just pro they just provide maybe a step to reproduce, uh -huh. but you need to feel uh, other information like the config information or installation, uh, not just the step to reproduce. That's not efficient. So that's because of lack of those information we cannot reproduce. Is that the answer? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, I'm Shou Chen from Microsoft Research. Um, you mentioned that uh, you randomly selected uh, the data set for uh, for the study, yeah. and I, I wonder if these reports are anonymous. Do, do you know the identity of the uh, the reporters? The reporters in the anonymous. Uh, we okay. collect the vulnerability reports from the CV websites, yeah. so it's also pub, pub, public. Uh, but, but the reporter's identity. I'm, I'm asking. Oh, I, I see your point. Yeah. You mean the reporter is anonymous? Yes. 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 Mm. Yeah, you are right. But we can infer the reporter from the references. For example, yeah, yeah. if the link is one blog, you can see, you can yeah, yeah. infer the, the reporter. Yeah, I, I'm asking the question because I, I suspect that uh, the reproducibility has as uh, a, a strong correlation with the reporter's identity because um, my, my own experience seems to be that uh, uh, inside Microsoft, um, some some uh, well-known reporter once they report whatever they report, people take very seriously. So, uh, for for example, in especially in the browser space, some uh, top finders, no matter what they they report, uh, the 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 whole teams seem to be very very serious. Oh, I yeah. I, I see your point. Yeah, there. 
the personality of the ripples uh, will um, seriously affect the style of the vulnerability ripples. So um, for the correlation of the vulnerability reports, we could leverage the um, the same vulnerability re, uh, vulnerability reporters to recover the information for other vulnerabilities. That's a yeah. good that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Xiao Jing from Indiana University, and uh, I have a question. Uh, First, nice talk. And uh, uh, we know uh, most of the CVE was applied by the companies uh, to get this CVE number. So when they report this bug, do you think uh, the company themselves did not reproduce these vulnerabilities and apply the vulnerability ID for this vulnerability? Or do you think why they need to lead a lot of uh, vulnerability detail to the public? if the company already successfully reproduced this vulnerability? Uh, your question is, uh, when a software vendor could reproduce the vulnerability, why they need those yeah, information? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean uh, for most of the CVE ID is applied by the uh, security, uh, uh, I mean for the uh, uh, security vendor. Mm -hmm. For example, re you report the bug, and the, uh, Microsoft will apply the CVE number for you. And maybe during the bug report, the vendor already reproduce uh, this uh, vulnerability, and uh, and they have this CVE number, have this CVE report. Do you think it's necessary to uh, release every detail about uh, this vulnerability? And so, what is the purpose for uh, in general, public to reproduce the vulnerability. I mean, um, you you just on the perspective of software vendors, but for our security research, when mm -hmm. we do our evaluation or benchmark, we need some public reported vulnerability and the detail to reproduce the vulnerability and test our security tools. Mm -hmm. So if they don't release any information about the vulnerability, or we can't find anything from the internet, how do we do our security research by, this, by those vulner public vulnerabilities? So uh, if the adversary also could easily reproduce this uh, vulnerability, do you think it's also good for the public? Oh, I, I see your point. That's, hmm. I think open source is is a good, is a good point. Hmm. Uh, maybe we can discuss later. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, uh, let's thank the speaker and uh, let's give all the speakers a big round of applause.